Hi everyone, it's Professor Primitin, and this video we're going to finish up our discussion on inverse trigonometric functions and right triangles. In the previous video, we talked about how to solve for angles in right triangles using inverse trigonometric functions. In this video, we're going to talk about how to evaluate expressions involving compositions of trigonometric and inverse trigonometric functions, and also how to express the composition of trigonometric functions as an equivalent algebraic expression. So let's talk about evaluating expressions involving inverse trigonometric functions. So in the following examples, we're going to find the exact values using trigonometric identities or right triangles. So example six, composing trigonometric functions and inverses. Find the exact value of each of the following composite trigonometric functions and their inverses. So number one, sine of inverse tangent of one half. So notice you have a composition of two different types of functions. You have a sine function and the inverse tangent function. So what we're going to do is call inverse tangent of one half an angle theta because we know that the value is going to be an angle. So let theta be inverse tangent of one half. And so this expression means tangent of theta is equal to one half. Well, if we're going to use right triangles, we know that tangent in terms of right triangles, in terms of the angle theta, is opposite side divided by adjacent side. And so the opposite divided by adjacent will be a ratio of one half. And so this angle theta, if we're talking about theta being the inverse tangent function, the inverse tangent function only exists if we restrict the domain of the tangent function to be in quadrants one or four, where the angle theta must be between negative pi over two and pi over two radians, not including negative pi over two and pi over two. And so we're gonna draw our triangle to be in quadrant one. So our angle theta is gonna represent this right triangle where the opposite side is one, and the adjacent side will be two. And so we have this missing side, we'll call it C for the length of the hypotenuse. We wanna find out what is the length of C, so we know all three sides of the right triangle. So let's use Pythagorean theorem, which says A squared plus B squared equals C squared, where C is the length of the hypotenuse. So A squared will be one squared, plus B squared will be two squared, and it equals C squared. So C squared is equal to one plus four, or five, and so C is plus or minus square root of five. Well, C is the length of the hypotenuse, and so C is square root of five, positive square root of five. And so now we know all three sides of the right triangle. The opposite side of theta is one, the adjacent side is two, and the length of the hypotenuse is square root of five. So now let's find out what we're actually trying to find. We wanna find sine of inverse tangent of one half. Well, we called inverse tangent of one half theta. And now the problem is sine of theta. Well, sine of theta would be, in terms of this angle theta, would be opposite divided by hypotenuse. So that would be one divided by square root of five, because we found out C was square root of five. So one divided by square root of five is sine of theta, which was sine of inverse tangent of one half. And that simplifies if you rationalize the denominator to be square root of five divided by five. So sine of inverse tangent of one half is square root of five divided by five. Number two, let's try to find out the value of cosine of inverse sine of negative one third. So again, we know that the inverse sine of negative one third will actually be an angle. So let's call it theta. Let theta be inverse sine of negative one third. And so this means sine of theta is equal to negative one third. And so notice the inverse sine was representing the angle theta. This angle theta must be in quadrants one or four. It must be between negative pi over two radians and pi over two radians, including the endpoints of that interval, because the inverse sine function must exist first. So we need to restrict the domain of the sine function to be between negative pi over two and pi over two radians, including the endpoints. And so since the sine function is a negative value, we're going to draw a triangle in quadrant four this time. And so our right triangle is in quadrant four, and so represent this angle as theta. The sine function is opposite divided by hypotenuse. So the opposite side is negative one, which makes sense because this is actually in quadrant four. Y values are negative. So the opposite side will be negative one, and the hypotenuse length will be three. So again, we have two sides of the right triangle. We need to find out the missing side using the Pythagorean theorem. So we'll call this missing side A. So we'll call it A because it's the adjacent side to theta. And so A squared plus B squared equals C squared is Pythagorean theorem. So A squared will stay A squared. B squared will be negative one in parentheses squared, and it equals the length of hypotenuse squared, so three squared. And so A squared plus one is equal to positive nine. And if you solve for A squared, you'll get A squared equals eight. And if you take the square root on both sides of the equation to cancel out the square power, you'll have A is plus or minus square root of eight, which will simplify to plus or minus two square root two. Well, notice that A is actually representing a distance of X that's in the positive direction. So A will be positive two square root two for the adjacent side. So now going back to actually what we're trying to find, we want to find cosine of inverse sine of negative one third. Well, we called inverse sine of negative one third theta. So we're trying to find out what is cosine of theta now. In terms of this angle theta, the cosine function is adjacent side divided by hypotenuse. So the adjacent side we just found out is two square root two, and the hypotenuse was length three. So cosine of theta will be two square root two divided by three. So let's try one more for this type of problem. Number three, cosecant of inverse tangent of negative one half. 
So again, we're dealing with an inverse trig function, which is the inside of the composition of two functions. So we'll call the inverse tangent of negative one half the angle theta because it does represent an angle. And so if theta equals inverse tangent of negative one half, that means the same thing as tangent of theta is equal to the argument of the inverse trig function, which in this case is negative one half. So notice that tangent is actually a negative value. Tangent is negative in quadrants two and four. And since we're talking about the inverse tangent function, again, the angle theta must be between quadrants one and four because we need to restrict the tangent function between negative pi over two and pi over two radians for the inverse tangent function to exist. The only way that the inverse tangent function exists and tangent to be a negative value is actually to be in quadrant four. So we'll draw our triangle to be in quadrant four. We know that in terms of theta, tangent of theta was negative one half and tangent is opposite divided by adjacent. So the opposite side of theta will be negative one, which makes sense because we're actually in quadrant four. This will actually be a negative value for the y coordinate and the adjacent side will be length two. So this time we're missing the hypotenuse again. So we'll call it C and we'll use a Pythagorean theorem to find out what is the length of the hypotenuse. A squared plus B squared equals C squared is a Pythagorean theorem. So A squared will be two squared plus B squared will be negative one in parentheses squared and it equals the length of the hypotenuse squared. So two squared will give you four, negative one in parentheses squared will give you one. So C squared is equal to four plus one or equal to five. And so C squared equals five or C is equal to plus or minus square root of five. And C is the length of the hypotenuse, it's always positive. And so C will be positive square root five. So now going back to the original problem, we want to find out what is cosecant of inverse tangent of negative one half. That is cosecant of theta because we called inverse tangent of negative one half theta. So we want to find out what is cosecant of theta. Well, cosecant in terms of this right triangle will be hypotenuse divided by the opposite side. Hypotenuse we found out was square root five. The opposite side was negative one. And so cosecant of theta, hypotenuse divided by opposite will be square root five divided by negative one or is equal to negative square root five. So in the next type of example, we're actually going to find out an algebraic expression for the composition of a trig function and its inverse. So example seven, Composing trigonometric functions and inverses, given that x is actually in quadrant one, use right triangle trigonometry to rewrite the following expressions as an algebraic expression of x, where x is between negative one and one, including x equals negative one, and also including x equals positive one. So the first problem, number one, sine of inverse cosine of x. So again, we have a composition of a sine function and the inverse cosine function as the inside function of the composite function. So again, we're gonna call the inverse trig function theta because it actually represents an angle. So let theta be inverse cosine of x, which means the same thing as cosine of theta is equal to x. Well, cosine of theta in terms of right triangles is adjacent divided by hypotenuse. So this x can actually be written as a fraction by placing it over one. So x divided by one is now a fraction. So you can call the adjacent side x and the hypotenuse will be one for your right triangle. And so again, we have the inverse cosine function is representing our angle theta. The inverse cosine function only exists if we restrict the cosine function to be between zero radians and pi radians, which will be quadrants one and two. So let's draw our triangle in quadrant one. So in this right triangle, we found out the adjacent side will be x and the hypotenuse has length one. And so we are missing one side of this right triangle. We'll call it B, the opposite side of the angle theta, and we'll find out what is the length of side B. So Pythagorean theorem, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. The A will be x, so it'll be x squared plus B is B squared, because we don't know what B is, and it equals one squared, which is the hypotenuse squared. So x squared plus b squared equals one squared, or if you want to get b by itself, because we want to find out what is the length of this side b, b squared will be one subtract x squared. And if you take the square root on both sides of the equation, you'll cancel out the square power, but you have to remember the plus or minus. So b is plus or minus square root of one subtract x squared. And keep in mind, this does not simplify any further. You can't take the square root of one and square root of x squared because you're subtracting inside the square root. And so b is representing the opposite side. Notice we're in quadrant one, so b will be a positive value. So b is square root one subtract x squared. That's the opposite side of this right triangle. And so going back to the original problem, we want to find out what is sine of inverse cosine of x. Well, if inverse cosine of x was actually representing theta, we're trying to find out what is sine of theta in terms of this right triangle. Sine of theta is actually opposite divided by hypotenuse. Well, the opposite side we just found out, it's square root one subtract x squared, so that's the numerator, and the hypotenuse was one, so it's square root one minus x squared, all divided by one, which simplifies to be square root one subtract x squared. And again, this does not simplify any further. And so this is what's called an algebraic expression that actually represents the composite of a trig function and its inverse trig function. So let's try one more to finish up this video. Number two, you wanna find an algebraic expression for this composite function, tangent of inverse cosine of x. 
So again, we have inverse cosine of x, that's going to be called an angle, theta. So theta is inverse cosine of x, which means the same thing as cosine of theta is equal to x, because x is the argument of the inverse cosine function. And so we can write x as a fraction by placing it over 1. And so now we can write cosine of theta is x divided by 1. And cosine, in terms of right triangles, is adjacent divided by hypotenuse. So the adjacent side will be x and the hypotenuse will be 1. And so keep in mind, this angle theta that's representing the inverse cosine function only exists if we have the inverse cosine function exist, which means that we need to restrict the domain of the cosine function to be between 0 radians and pi radians, which means that angle theta is in quadrants 1 or 2. So we'll draw our triangle in quadrant 1 again. So this angle theta, the opposite side is b, which we don't know. We only know the adjacent side is x, and the hypotenuse length is 1. So again, use the Pythagorean theorem, because we're dealing with the right triangle, to find out this length of the missing side, b. And so a squared will be x squared, plus b squared, we don't know what b is, so it'll be b squared, and it equals the length of hypotenuse squared, so that'll be 1 squared. So x squared plus b squared equals 1 squared, or b squared is 1 subtract x squared, if you get b squared by itself on one side of the equation, and then take the square root on both sides of the equation to cancel out the square power on the b. Remember the plus or minus. So b is plus or minus square root 1 subtract x squared. However, b is actually going to be positive because we're in quadrant 1. That's representing the vertical distance from the x-axis. So b is square root 1 minus x squared. And that's the opposite side of the right triangle. And again, this cannot be simplified because you're subtracting inside the square root. And so going back to the original problem, we're trying to find out what is tangent of inverse cosine of x. Well, we called inverse cosine of x theta. So we're trying to find out what is tangent of theta. Well, tangent in terms of right triangles is opposite divided by adjacent. Well, we just found out the opposite side is square root 1 subtract x squared. So that's the numerator. So square root 1 minus x squared. And it's divided by the adjacent side we knew was x. So it would be square root 1 minus x squared all divided by x. It's the algebraic expression for tangent of inverse cosine of x. So this finishes our video on inverse trigonometric functions and right triangles. We talked about how to evaluate expressions involving compositions of trigonometric and inverse trigonometric functions, and we also talked about how to express the composition of trigonometric functions as an equivalent algebraic expression. If you have any questions about any examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while I work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you in the next video when we talk about the law of signs.